You choose to wear something um, very different, and I think people have a lot of uh, misconceptions or pre preconceived ideas, at least, about what you wear. Tell us, uh, tell us why you choose to wear the niqab. <laughs> Um, I think this is the best way to stop uh, people coming to you, people getting attracted to you while going out, and uh, that's what the Islamic law says. So I just want to follow the law. So tell us a little bit about your journey to start wearing the niqab, because I understand it's very different from that of your mother's, for instance. Yeah, I, I would like... Uh, uh, while growing up, I used to think, like in the high school, in grade 12, so I used to reflect upon whatever uh, the Islamic law is, and I used to think about it. So the more I thought about it, so I became closer to it, and finally I decided that this is the best thing to do, is to cover up properly according to the Islamic law. And you know, you you were sort of talking about how you feel um, that you should dress as an interpretation of Islamic law, and that was one of the terms in the survey that I think people took issue with: this notion of should. What should Muslim women wear, and what is most appropriate? Um, you know, do you kind of have a you know an idea, or do you have sort of a preconceived idea of say Sobia um, for not choosing to wear the niqab? I mean, what are the sort of perceptions within your community of, of other women and how they choose to dress? Uh uh, it, it depends completely person on the person to each her own, like, uh, they do whatever they want, like, if they think this is best, they can do that. Uh, like, it, it can vary person to person, it's, it's not, like, compulsory. Even in our country, it's people, some people are wearing niqab, some people are wearing hijab, some people don't even wear that. And even here in Malaysia, it's totally up to the person. This is, I mean, this is fascinating to me as well, because Javaria, you were um, born in Pakistan, raised in Saudi Arabia, and now you're uh, studying Kuala Lumpur. So, you know, you've kind of yeah. seen, you've kind of seen a variety of different um, ways that Muslim women dress in, in you know, a variety of different countries. Um, what, what is it like, you know, is there a kind of like goading and perception? I mean, I, you know, just to sh share a personal kind of moment, when I was in Tehran and, you know, I'm um, half Persian, I remember distinctly, you know, a moment in, wow. a, in a, well, I was in a bazaar when I was six years old, and I, I remember distinctly a woman coming up to me and, you know, basically calling me a prostitute and saying that I should cover up my, um, my head. My hair wasn't covered. I was only six years old, but I, you know, covered wow, everything else. Wow, you're six years old. <laughs> yeah, and so, you know, but do, do you ever get that sense of judgment? Do people ever kind of judge you for wearing something that they no, see? No, you're as, not allowed yeah. to judge you. I mean, judge others. Like, it's totally up to the person. It's, it's between Allah and the person. You're not allowed to judge anyone just because they don't cover or they do cover or they're doing something bad. And, you know, everyone... It's totally up to the person. And, you know, one of the things I think is the misconception is that, you know, you obviously can't be interested in fashion because, you know, you wear a niqab. Why would you be interested in fashion? No, that's, that's totally not true. Because I just wear... Even if the woman is covering, they, when they go in front of their with the girlfriends, and hang out with the girlfriends. They do dress up like totally in a trendy way with their styles, heels, makeup, whatever you can, uh, you name it, and it's going to be there. And, you know, I, you mentioned high heels. I understand that you're a bit of a shoe lover. Yeah. <laughs> I have, like, tons of heels, but there, there are, like, places I don't wear heels, and there are places where I wear heels. You know, and then I think this is kind of an interesting thing as well about kind of place and location, like where you can express yourself and where you maybe can't. Yeah. Um, you know, Rosina, what do you think about that, that sort of idea of where you can be more expressive and, you know, in terms of dress um, as a Muslim woman and, and where you can't? Is there sort of, there, you know, is it a kind of a matter of appropriateness in terms of place and context? Absolutely. Um, you know, I definitely dress differently in Pakistan um, or even in Cairo than I do in the States. But I don't know if that's really a matter of being forced to. It's also a matter of, of choice. And I feel a lot more comfortable and happier when I'm wearing traditional clothes in Pakistan. Um, whereas, you know, in the States, I, I would I sometimes I'm forced to wear things depending on the context. 
And, you know, how does it make you feel? I mean, one of the things we haven't really touched on much is this idea of, you know, what you wear and how that it makes you feel, uh, you know, sort of does it make you feel more confident if you're um, stepping out and wearing hijab or, or you know, as you choose uh, at the moment not to? Yeah, I mean, I think that really depends on each person and really what they've decided True. to do. I, you know, I, I don't know if I've really thought seriously about wearing the hijab, um, if that would make me more comfortable. Um, but I think like any any other aspect of someone's life, someone comes to that decision eventually. And I think with anything, they just grow more confident.